Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about traditional fire. The fire movement is something that I have brought up on my channel quite a few times. I have made a video on this a couple of years ago. I, I just talked about it briefly and the series has been a long time coming. I really wanted to focus on financial independence and the fire movement after I paid off my debt or saved up enough money to pay off my debt. And yes, I could have talked about all of these things before, but it just, I guess for the purpose of this YouTube channel though, I wanted things to kind of go in order. If you're unfamiliar with the FIRE movement, FIRE is an acronym and it stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. And there are many types of FIRE. For this video, we're gonna focus on traditional FIRE and basically just talk about the basics, what it is, how to achieve it, why people do it. And I'll give you some examples so I can pull in numbers and you can see what, what people are looking at. However, over the next couple of months, I'm going to be talking about the various types of FIRE. So there is barista fire, lean fire, fat fire, coast fi, slow fi, all of the varieties, we're going to cover them. And I do wanna cover all the varieties because I think a lot of people hear the fire movement and automatically are close-minded to it because many people think that it is not for them or you have to follow a certain lifestyle or be really, really extreme with your finances in order to achieve fire. But that's not the case. There are many varieties of it that you could go down and the idea here, that the main focus of the FIRE movement really for most people is the FI part. So the financial independent portion of it. And I think that everybody should try to improve their finances and strive for financial independence because no matter what, that's going to help you with your future. And that could be whether you want to retire before the traditional age of, you know, like 62 here in America, whether you want to keep working until you're 80, 85, 90, or whatever the case may be. In simple terms, the idea behind FIRE, it's really about prioritizing what is important to you, spending money on those things if, if you choose to, if you want to, and then saving and investing as much as possible. There are some basic rules that go along with the FIRE movement, and I wouldn't say these are very strict rules, but this is something I wanna introduce in the first video because this is how many people determine how much money they need to have saved and invested in order to actually retire. And we'll talk about that word retire in just a moment because this doesn't necessarily mean that everybody is going to completely stop working. So I will clarify that a little bit further. But the, the first rule is the 25x rule. The 25x rule is very simple math. So you determine how much you want to spend per year in retirement. For this video, I'm gonna be using very simple calculations. Let's say that in retirement, you want to spend $40,000 per year. And you take that annual spend amount, multiply it by 25, which is where the 25X rule comes in. And for that calculation, it would be $1 million. So what this means is once you have at least $1 million saved and invested, then you can retire, you no longer have to work. The other rule that you will commonly hear talked about when you hear about the FIRE movement is the 4% rule. There was a study carried out in the 90s by this gentleman, William Bengen, and what he determined was that you could pull 4% of your investments as a safe withdrawal rate. However, that 4% really only applies to your first year of retirement. So again, I'll go through some calculations and examples. So in your first year, again, let's say you have the 40,000 expenses per year. So you invest, save $1 million and now you're retired. So in that first year, you, for this example, we're going to say you have no other income coming in. So you pull out 4% of your total investments for your first year of retirement, AKA $40,000. Now for each year after your first year of retirement, you're still going to do that 4% but with inflation included on top of that. So you have your $40,000. Let's say inflation for the following year is 3%. So you're gonna take 40,000 times 1.03. The 1.03 is the 3% inflation. And now in that second year of retirement, you can spend $41,200. And then you can continue that calculation every year going forward. Now keep in mind that yes, you are pulling from your investments, but your money is still in the market. You still have the bulk of your money 
invested. And as long as your money is staying invested, for the most part, you are going to continue to see growth through capital gains, through compounding interest, dividends, all of those things. And that money should keep you afloat for many, many years, basically for the rest of your life. In this study, he found that most portfolios last 30 years or longer, but also many of them lasted for 50 years or more. This 4% rule is actually a more conservative approach, and this is also assuming that you're invested in 50% stock, 50% bond, which many people aren't. So many people are going to be invested more in stocks, and because of that, you could see, you could see a hit in your investments, but, but by having less bonds, you're probably going to see more growth in your accounts than anything. The other thing that is not taken into account here is social security, so that would just be on top of your retirement savings. So when you are planning out your fire number, whatever amount you need saved and invested by the time you can actually leave your job, you don't want to add in your social security earnings. Something that's also not considered here is the people who will continue to earn money after they quote unquote retire. And this is where I want to talk about the reasons why people go after the fire movement. I will preface this by saying that the RE portion of the fire movement can be a little bit misleading for many people. I know that for the people that I learned from, the, the bloggers, the YouTubers, anybody who has reached fire, they are still earning income from, from some way or another. So technically you're not retired, right? But people get so hung up on that. And that's why I really wanna emphasize that the financial independence is the main focus for many people, including myself. Because if I were to retire in the next 10 years, for example, I definitely don't want to just do nothing with my time. That's not the goal of most people. They don't wanna just go sit on the beach, watch Netflix all day. That's not what people want to do. They still want to work, but do something that's more enjoyable. So that could be selling your arts and crafts, creating YouTube videos, making music. There are so many things that people want to do outside of a traditional nine to five. And this is why we are going after financial independence. And when you do achieve FIRE, so let's say you do reach that $1 million amount, but then you continue to, to earn income from, from some other source, you can use that income to pay whatever you need to pay, your $40,000 in the year, and that means you would be pulling less from your investments and now your portfolio is going to last you even longer. I don't want this video to be too long. I don't wanna to get too much into the nitty gritty of FIRE, so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the reasons behind why people go after this, and maybe some of this would resonate with you, and I'm sure it does. There are some people who truly do want to just retire early. I don't hear of this very often. I've actually never heard of this uh, because you know, most people want to do something with, with their life after retirement, no matter what age they are. But sitting on your couch, watching movies, doing absolutely nothing fulfilling in your day is a quick way to deteriorate. There's a, there's a lot of studies on that where people who retire and no longer have any sort of purpose in their life actually end up sick or passing away. But that could be a potential reason. So people just want to go ahead and retire younger than 62. The second reason is to be work optional and kind of going along with that is just having more freedom in flexibility in the work that you do. So let's say that you have your $1 million, but you don't want to quit your job yet. Maybe you enjoy your job or you want to work part time. We'll talk about that. That gets into other forms of fire, such as barista fire. But if you have all that money invested, you have your $1 million portfolio, you now have a whole bunch of extra security. So if you're in a job that is not serving you, you can leave for some time and, and switch to go somewhere else. Or you could take a pay cut and go somewhere else or take a sabbatical. Some people also just want to be more secure for the future. And what I mean by that is people who are investing and in saving at a much higher rate than average and by the time they reach middle age, they have a much higher net worth than, than their peers because they've been focusing so much on that investment. And now they may continue to work. They may even retire at a traditional age or a little bit earlier. It could be like 55, 58, but still earlier than traditional retirement age. 
And now if anything comes up, they have much more security. So if a health issue arises, or if they wanna cover their child's college costs or wedding or down payment on a house, there's now all these options available to them because they focus so much on investing. And then one final reason that I'll give is for generational wealth. So same thing here, people may retire early or they could continue working until traditional retirement age. But if they're focusing on investing and they have this huge portfolio by the time that they retire, they can pass on their wealth to their children, their grandchildren, or whatever the case may be. There are some risks that come with fires. So when you're actually on the journey to financial independence, there, there isn't as much risk because you're during this time you're still working, but also investing and saving heavily. But there have been some cases where people actually retire. They are no longer working. They don't have any other source of income. They are just living off of their portfolio and then something could come up. So they could go through a divorce and lose a lot of their, their assets through that process or they could have a big health issue come up and now they have to pay thousands of dollars on medical care and they need to return to work because of that. So yes, absolutely there are times that things don't work out perfectly and, and people are not able to completely follow through with their FIRE plan. However, I do still think it's an amazing movement and I will be talking about all the types over the next couple of months, as I said, and with that, I hope to inspire people to look into this more because no matter what, you really can't go wrong with paying down debt, investing, saving more, lowering your spending, figuring out what it is that you want to prioritize in your life and focus on spending on those things and cut out the, the other stuff for the most part. So I think it's something everybody can go after. You may not be able to retire at 30 years old or 40 years old, but there are lots of people who do this and retire at 50 or 55, 58, just a little bit earlier than their traditional retirement age. And that, that counts for a lot. But comment down below what you think of the FIRE movement, if you've heard of it, if you are going after it, if you have any questions, definitely let me know. There's going to be a lot more to come when it comes to FIRE, but wanted to, to start with this and introduce it to anybody who may not have heard of it before. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. It really supports my channel and I'll see you in my next video.